electricity. Uh, the second part is electric charge. And we're just going to look at um, protons, neutrons, and electrons charging by friction. Um, and examples such as spray painting and photocopying. Certain copies are quite complicated. Um, so just to start off with them, we understand that uh, the structure of the atom we have inside uh, the nucleus, we've got protons with a positive charge and we've got lots of neutrons with uh, no charge. But around the outside, we know we've got these electrons. Now, uh, the electrons have got uh, a negative charge. Now, static electricity is caused by the removal or the addition of electrons. Okay, it's really important, it really is important to remember Protons never, ever move, ever, all right? So if we think about, um, we have two objects. So if we have two objects and they rub together. Now, if we think about them, two objects that we rub together, we could, it could be a rod and a duster, it could be anything. They will contain equal numbers of protons and electrons. Now, obviously this would be millions and millions and millions, but at the moment, this is neutral because it's got four pluses and four minuses, so it's neutral. This is the same. Four pluses, four minuses, therefore it's neutral. Equal numbers of protons and electrons, so they're both neutral. They don't attract and they don't repel each other. However, if these things were rubbed together and the materials they're made from are different, then what can happen is electrons from one can be transferred to the other one. So we might transfer a couple of electrons from one to the other. Now then, when this happens, this has now lost two electrons. It's now got more protons than electrons, so now the overall charge of this is positive. This is gained electrons, therefore the overall charge of this one is negative. So this is now negatively charged, this is positively charged. And opposites always attract each other. And that's why if these objects were brought near each other, they would attract each other. So static electricity is caused by objects rubbed together, electrons from one can be transferred to the other, leaving the one that they left positively charged and the one that they go to becomes negatively charged. Before that happened, they were neutral. And after it happens, they would attract each other. Two positively charged objects would repel each other, two negatively charged objects would repel each other, but opposites would attract each other. Now, going a slightly more complicated, you'll be expected to know of examples and Whilst you can look, you can look in your revision guides and you can look at all of the examples, there are several which you need to be aware of and it will be useful to read that in your revision guides. I'm going to show you a couple of them, but what I think is useful is if you can just look at any given situation and understand how static electricity must apply to that situation, then I think you can answer any question on it, whether or not you recognise it, with the exception of a photocopier. Um, I think it's really important that um, you have an awareness of how a photocopier works. Now then, a common uh, question on this would be spray painting. So if you think about a bike, or a car door, if you want to spray paint a car door, the car door will now be hung off the ground on a big hook and the spray paint comes out of a canister. Now this is what happens. As the spray paint comes out, the spray paint is given a static charge. So it doesn't matter which one. So we'll say it, electrons are removed. So electrons are removed from the paint as it leaves. That means the paint is now positively charged. Now we need to think, it's very important that we think through this process slowly. If each single droplet of paint is positively charged and positively charged things all repel each other, 
That means each droplet of paint will repel every other droplet of paint because they're all the same charge and that means the paint will form a very 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 fine mist. It won't all gloop together, it will be a very fine mist because every, every part of the paint repels every other part. So this fine mist is now travelling towards this car door which is not touching the ground. So in order to make this paint stick to the door, this metal hook is given a very large negative charge. This makes the car negatively charged. So now you've got this red, fine, positively charged mist, which is now attracted to the negatively charged door. And what that does is, it makes the paint stick all over the door and it gives you a really, really, really uniform coating across the door and also it stops any paint being wasted on the floor because it all goes on the door. You're not wasting paint everywhere else. So this is a very effective way to spray paint metallic objects because you give them opposite charges and therefore all of the paint ends up where it's supposed to go and it does so uniformly so you get a nice even coating. Now, there are lots of other examples in chimneys, precipitators in chimneys. Um, there are lots of examples of where you use static electricity. Um, this one is a, is a common one and the one I just want to mention is the photocopier. Because um, the photocopier is quite complicated. So if we think about a photocopying drum. A photocopying drum, this is inside a photocopier. It's given a positive charge all over it. Now it's covered in something called selenium and it's given this positive charge. Now when you photocopy something, what happens is you come along with your piece of paper and you put it through the photocopier. And you might want to photocopy a giant letter T. Now, an extremely bright light, and you've probably seen this on photocopiers, an extremely bright light comes in, bounces off the paper, and reflects onto the drum. Now, where the light hits the drum, the charge, the positive charge, leaves the drum. So where the light bounces off your, your image, and hits the drum, the charge leaves the drum. But where it's black, where, where it's black and, the, and nothing is reflected, then in those parts, excuse me, in those parts, the positive charge does not leak away. So what we end up with is, a positively charged area the same as the image but all the rest of the positive charge disappears so we're left with a positively charged shape the same as our, as our original image on the drum and it's positively charged so the next thing they do is they spray toner all over it so they spray toner all over the drum. Now the toner is negatively charged so when they spray toner over the drum so the toner is a really 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 fine mist again but it is all negatively charged. So the negatively charged toner comes along and is attracted to this positively charged area. Remember the rest of the drum is not charged. So the toner is attracted to this positively charged area. So now we have um, our toners here. So you get the toner sticks where this T image is. The roller now rolls this toner onto a new piece of paper. So a new piece of paper, it rolls onto that and therefore creates our, our shape again. This is then heated up, this is then heated up, which then 
melts the toner, if you like, onto the paper and gives you a permanent copy of the original. And that is how a photocopier works, using static electricity and light. Okay? Um, it's also worth remembering that the safety element of uh, static electricity, such as when you refuel aeroplanes, um, it's just worth remembering that during flight, um, electrons might be rubbed off the plane and therefore the plane might be positively charged and if you were to approach the plane and try and refuel it uh, you might create a static uh, a spark as, as the plane is neutralized as the charges move up through the earth or when you refuel a plane the the fuel might move through the pipe and rub electrons uh, off the fuel onto the pipe and therefore as the charges build up you would have a negatively charged lorry refuel the lorry in a positively charged plane it was also in a spark which could ignite the fuel so in all of these situations you need an earthing chain to make sure that the, that neither object ever becomes charged um, you need to be aware of things like lightning rods so um, just the safety precautions so uh, in churches for example which tend to be the tallest buildings in churches if in the clouds um, if in the clouds where you've got uh, rain, for example, as something's moving through the sky, you've, you're rubbing off electrons, therefore you're creating positive and negatively charged areas. And if you have, for example, a positively charged um, area above the ground, then what could happen is the earth, electrons from the earth, might try and neutralise it. And that's fine if it goes up through a lightning rod. But what wouldn't be fine is if you were playing golf here and it went through you. Okay, which is why it's really important that tall object, tall buildings have a lightning rod at the top to conduct the lightning safely to the earth so that it's less likely to go through a person. Okay, so just so be aware of static electricity and that where you've got friction, where you've got rubbing, where you've got movement, you can create static electricity and that earthing that will allow the charges to move freely away and therefore make it neutral again. Okay?